So let's start this video with a pretty simple idea. Let's say I asked you, what number would you multiply by 5 to get 0? I hope you realize that the answer is pretty simple. You'd have to multiply it by 0. Let's try another question. Let's say that you could use any two numbers as long as their product is 0. What could your numbers be? Hopefully you said that at least one of them has to be 0. Maybe both are zero, but we know that at least one of them must be zero. So let's go to this question now. Let's say that this quadratic equals zero. If we could write this quadratic as a product of two things, which I believe we can, isn't this factorable? We could write it as x minus four and x plus one. We are now saying that two numbers multiply to zero. Well, just like the example above, we know that at least one of them must be zero, perhaps both of them. So perhaps x minus 4 equals zero, which would mean that x equals 4. Maybe the x plus 1 equals zero. And if that's the case, then x would equal negative 1. The property that allows us to say this is called the zero product property. And it's very simple. In order to get a product of zero, one of the numbers that you are multiplying by must be zero. Now let's look at this example. There are many different ways you could solve for x in this example. The first one I would suggest is by graphing. And there are actually two different ways of thinking about it. The first one would be to find the intersection between the function on the left and the function on the right. Or we could set it equal to zero and then find its zeros. So that's one method. Another method we just talked about is factoring. And we'll do that in a moment. And then the third, which is really the fourth way, I'm going to combine these two, we could always solve by completing the square since we're dealing with a quadratic equation. However, we have completed the square for any quadratic, and that's called the quadratic formula. So really, that's the same type of method. Let's try the first one. Let's solve this by graphing. We could simply graph the 2x squared minus x as one function, we could graph the 6 as our second function. Let's do that right now. So I've already entered in y1 and y2. I'd like to find a nice window so where I can see this intersection. And now I'm going to find it. So our first intersection is at negative 1.5 comma 6. And our second intersection is at 2 comma 6. Now remember, when we say solve for x, we really only care about the x value here. So it seems to me like we have two answers, negative 1.5 and positive 2. However, we also could have set this equation equal to zero by subtracting six from both sides. If you think of it this way, if this was y1 and this was y2, really you wouldn't even need to be graphing zero. You would just have a parabola that looks something like this, and you'd be finding where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm not going to do it for you. I think you could find those zeros, and you would see that you would get the exact same answers. You would have x equals negative 1.5, and x equals positive 2. Now let's try to solve by factoring. You could factor a GCF out of the left side right now. I think that would be x, but there's really no point. The whole reason to factor something is to have a product 
and you'd like that result to be zero. That way we could use the zero product property. So my first step would be to get this equation equal to zero. Now if I can write this quadratic as a product, I could use the zero product property to solve for x. So let's try factoring. I'm going to try 2x and x. And let's see, what multiplies to negative 6? Um, how about 3 and negative 2? So if I put the 3 here, I'll get a 3x. And if I put the negative 2 here, I'll get a negative 4x. Perfect, that will get me my negative x. So I think that's factored correctly. So now notice I have a product of two expressions, and their result is zero, which means that either one of them could be equal to zero. So let's see, what if the 2x plus 3 equals zero? Let's solve for x. A lot of people don't solve, and then they make mistakes on this one for some reason. So I would minus 3 on both sides and then divide by 2. So x is negative 3 halves. Oh, perfect. We've been seeing the negative 1.5. And over here, And over here, x minus 2 might equal 0, so x would equal 2, the other answer we've been seeing. Now, solving by factoring is always a nice idea if you can do it. But we also know that not everything is factorable. What about solving by completing the square? Well, if I have this equation... I could just complete the square on the left side. I don't know if that's the best idea right now. We could do it. Why don't I just do the work? And if you'd like to try it, you could pause the video and then see what my work shows you. So here's my work done out. You'll notice that it's, you know, it's kind of nasty because it's fractions, but that's how the world goes and we have some fractions sometimes. And notice I got the same exact answers. I got x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 halves. And I would much rather use the quadratic formula than completing the square, because the quadratic formula has already completed the square. So we just write down the formula here. Here we go. And we had our equation to be 2x squared minus x equals 6. So notice that when you're using the quadratic formula, you actually have to have an equation equal to 0. That's how we solved for it in the first place. So I have to move that 6 over. So I have an a value of 2, a b value of negative 1, and a c value of negative 6. Okay. So if b is negative 1, I'm just going to put a positive 1 in for negative b. And then my square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c. I'm just plugging in all those values over 2 times 2. Let's simplify that. Let's see here. Um, we have 1. That really becomes a, uh, an addition problem. So what is that? Plus 2. 48, so 49 over 4. Okay, I know the square root of 49, so we'll simplify that. So here I have 1 plus 7 over 4. That's the 2. And here I have 1 minus 7 over 4. That's the negative 6 over 4. Oh, there's the negative 3 halves. So what's nice about the quadratic formula is that it will work for any quadratic, right? As long as it's a quadratic equation, equal to zero. When you're solving quadratic equations, you really want to think about what is the most efficient way. You also might want to consider which way are you less likely to make mistakes.